This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Pfizer v. Elmore. You are married and have been together seven years. You are high school sweethearts. But your heart is in jeopardy right now because of allegations of cheating. Would you share with the court what is at stake? What is on the line with these allegations? Right now, Your Honor, everything is at stake. Travion and I have been married for seven years, and I am a mother and a wife, and he's been affiliating with different co-workers from his job. You're supposed to be entertaining me, not other women. All right, Mr. Elmore, tell me you're not at work working. Your Honor, I am not at work working. I'm there to make a paycheck, come home, ride for my family. So what do you want to show today? I want to show her proof that I'm not cheating because my marriage is at jeopardy right now, you know? And I love Miracle. I love my family too much. We build this something together. I want to continue building a legacy. But you are not buying this at all, Ms. Pfizer. No, Your Honor, I'm not. You say there are warning signs. Tell me about those. The first warning sign that stuck out to me was the fact that Travion's wardrobe changed tremendously. <laughs> oh, he, <laughs> went from, he went from being just laid back, chilled um, outfit type dressing to becoming very flashy. Huh. He started buying watches, <laughs> chains, fitted hats, just things that do not fit his personality. But, Ms. Fazer, most women would like their man to kind of step it up a little bit. Absolutely. Wh right? This change came out of nowhere, becoming a totally different person. It's like I don't know, even know him anymore. <laughs> Is, is that a bad thing? Am I missing something here? Well, no, but you know, Mr. Cutler, when we met, I mean, you were, you were a nice dresser. I was you, a good dresser. <laughs> you were a really nice dresser. I was a good dresser. And you know, you know that outfit, that brown outfit that I wanted to burn? Yeah, but every, well, look, <laughs> everybody has that one outfit that... That I wanted to burn real yeah. badly. I mean, you and, had one or two. What? Yeah. <laughs> You, you had one or two, but that's I had okay. one or two. You had one or two outfits that I was like. But here's the yeah. thing: when we. But, but I, I, I was so into you as a person, the outfits really didn't matter. Aww. Ooh, yeah. we you talk a good game, Mr. Cutler. I can't, I can't remember what they looked like. You remember the brown that outfit? That brown outfit was something else. But as you know, as we after we were married, we started buying for each other. We started kind of changing up. Right. And that's a good thing. Yeah, but it was a mutual thing. You didn't just all of a sudden break out, you know, some new look. And Ms. Pfizer is thinking she's getting flashy, and I presume it's for the women. Yes. You, that's, that's why you all didn't have a discussion about it. He just busted the mood. Yes, Your Honor. All right. What are the other warning signs? The second thing was that Travion and I have always had free-flowing communication in our relationship as far as our phones were concerned. Okay. He wound up taking my fingerprint off his phone. So now I have no access to anything in his phone. Ms. Elmore, you got all these flashy clothes, you change up your style, your wardrobe, and now you shut out your phone too? What's going on? Your Tell Honor, me about the clothes. I bought the clothes. I'm an artist, and I do hip-hop music. Okay. So, as the times goes, you know, you got to change to appeal to the younger audience, you know? And right now, it's all flashy clothes, you know, jewelry, fitted hats. No. no you got to give the people what they want. Exactly. You know, you... You, you, you got to give the you people what they want. Get, you got to give the people what they want. You building a... I'm building a brand for myself, you know? If no brand, you can't sell. I want to make easy and fast money. All with right. A passion that I, with a passion that I thought we both shared, as far as the music goes... But I see it's only one, it's one sided now. We shared a passion, but you seem like you're trying to share it with somebody else. No, because if I was oh. trying to share it with somebody else, I would have been shared. I had plenty of opportunities to, oh. but I chose not to. Well, I can't tell. So, Mr. Elmore, you're saying the clothes, the change in style, and all that, that's to promote your rap career, not to promote your relationship with somebody else. Correct, Your Honor. But how do you explain changing the phone so she doesn't have access? Well, Your Honor, the, um, at my job, it was an ex coworker there. You know, she asked me to see my phone. All right. Now, I was under the assumption that she was making a phone call. Okay. But instead, she, you know, she decided to take pictures and post them on my Instagram. Why is she so comfortable with you? Why is she so comfortable with you? First of all, I didn't know she did it. I don't know why she was comfortable with me. You are a whole married man. <laughs> you there could, should be no Okay, so why did you take her thumbprint off or her fingerprint off? I have trust issues now. I don't trust nobody. I don't ever trust my own family with my phone. You can't trust your wife. You don't but trust your wife? You're... Okay, no. so you, you don't trust your wife? No, I do not trust my wife with my phone. With your phone? With my phone. 
Is it because you're hiding things? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not hiding anything. Don't forget, you went you went through my emails. I don't miss deadlines because you don't open un, I don't let I open I open emails that you have opened up and you have not told me about. I, I wouldn't have a reason to if you did not purposely hide certain But things if you would have told me, hey Beg, you have a deadline. I opened up this email. It would have never have been like that. So Mr. Elmore, you're saying you don't trust your wife with your phone. But now, she doesn't trust you, and that's why you're here. Yes, Your Honor. Trying to save your marriage. Yes. Ms. Pfizer, why else do you think he's cheating? Well, it was about 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, his phone wound up going off. But the message that he got was a hey from the old co-worker. Um, the messages were basically... Um, she was having vaginal issues. Now, and... now I, I, Wait, I can she... explain. I can explain that situation easily. I definitely have evidence uh, okay, to text okay. messages. Ron, would you please get that? Yes, yeah, Sean. Thank you. Welcome. So this, this is your recollection of the messages you yes. saw. Yes. So the first one you gave us is the other woman says in the bathroom. I'm having vaginal problems. Yes. Yes, sir. All right. I... I... Uh... Miss <laughs> well, Elmore, it, tell me how this co-worker is comfortable enough to tell so you about this. Yana, I don't know how comfortable she is with me, was with me. I, I think know, we do. But I know at that, that particular day, we was crowded in the store. And uh -huh. I unboxed her saying, they need you up front. After she came out the restroom, you know, I addressed the situation to her like that was inappropriate. I'm a married man. I'm a happy married man. Sir, are you really? Yes. All now, right. You said you were a happy married man because yes. what Miss Pfizer has submitted. A second one, recollection. It doesn't say, hey, I'm a married man, that wasn't appropriate. What it says is, if I wasn't married, I dot, would. Dot, dot, dot. I would. That's different. Because that means you're thinking about it, but, yeah. you, but you can't do now, it. I, I remember that conversation. On that day, we was getting ready to take our CPR, CPR classes. And she said, if I pass out, what would you do? So I said, if I was married, I would dot, dot, dot. But I was indicating that if I wasn't married, I would give you CPR. That makes no sense. It does make sense. It does. Color, did it he does. Just... <laughs> so, I'm wait, 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 hold up. Are you <laughs> suggesting that if you are married, you wouldn't do CPR or you wouldn't yes. save life? Yes, I, yes, Your Honor, I'm so serious. I don't want to put my lips Sorry. upon another woman if I'm married. Even in an emergency to save her life? Even emergency. Note I, the file, no. do not be around him if I fall out. You just, yeah. you just <laughs> gonna turn the blue up. <laughs> but then the other piece that we kind of glossed over was, mm. she felt comfortable enough with him to say, Thank so you. would you give me CPR? which could have been cold for something else. I'm almost sure it was. It, if it was, I didn't get that hint. I think no. you did, because you said, if I wasn't married. All right, so, Ms. Pfizer. Yes, ma'am. This is really bad. Are there any other reasons that you believe that Mr. Elmore is cheating with this coworker? Yes. Um, so, he is a rapper. Okay. And he just recently uh, released an EP. And with this EP, he told me that he had dedicated it to her. Basically, Whoa. she was inspiration for him writing this the way that he did. Okay, hold He told up. you this? Yes. Well, the court has done its research, mm -hmm. and we have found some of the lyrics to Mr. Elmore's song. Mm-hmm. I'm done playing games. I know you want to be mine. Fresh out the shower, it's about to go down. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me your dreams, and I give you one hell of a night, baby. This is what you dedicated to your female coworker. Come on, man, talk Yana, to I, us. I know how I look. It look. It looks suspect. I know. No, oh. no, no. It looks horrible. Suspect, we can do <laughs> horrible. So if if she thinks something's not right, what she do is she keep digging. And digging and digging. And obviously, until... you see what I found. <sighs> I struck gold. <laughs> let, me, let me finish explaining. You ain't struck gold, you struck fool's gold. <laughs> Let's be honest. Well, okay. Mr. Elmore, to me, it seems like you're the one who keeps digging and digging and digging because you're digging yourself into a deeper hole. <laughs> <laughs> it, may, it may seem like that. Tell me how a sexually laced EP 
dedicated to another woman, how is that not proof that you've been with this woman? It was just inspiration, Garner. You know, as an artist, as, as an artist, we draw, we tend to draw inspiration from, from life experiences, you know? So what if I agree? Yeah. I didn't experience nothing. <laughs> I experienced nothing. Like I said, she was, it was just inspiration about the situation. Mr. Elmore, this digging for inspiration has put your family and your marriage at risk. Tell him what you are thinking and feeling. Because I see it all over you. I've given you all of me. And now I feel like I'm only getting a portion of you because there's so much that's keeping you away from us. And us, I mean your family. But specifically me, I'm asking you to just be honest and you're not doing so. I am being honest. This, whether, whether you believe me or not. This is my final straw. This is the end of the line. If these results come back different from everything that you've been telling me, this is it. We're done, we're through, I'm finished, I can't. And, and Mr. Elmore, you maintain that you have not been involved with anyone else, and specifically this coworker. No, Your Honor, I have not at yeah. all. And this is all in her head. This is all in her head. This court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, the court would like to call digital forensic consultant Patrick Seward to determine, is he cheating? <laughs> How are you, Mr. Seward? Good day, Your Honors. Yeah, it's good to see you. To so see the you. court ordered Mr. Elmore to submit his phone for examination. Is that correct, Mr. Seward? Yes. So we conducted a full forensic analysis of Mr. Elmore's phone, and that included uh, things like text messages, pictures, video, web history, and apps data. So did you find anything in his phone that was provocative? Oh, yes. Tell uh, us about that. Well, uh, we uncovered 3,675 uh, pictures and about 100 videos. Uh, and one of those videos was of Mr. Elmore having sex with a woman. Were you able to uncover who the woman was in the video? After further inspection and investigation, it was determined that the video was of Mr. Elmore having sex with, with his wife. All right. Okay. Well, thank goodness. <laughs> Well, Mr. Seward, was this the only sex video that you found in Mr. Elmore's phone? It was the only sex video, yes, but there were also pictures. Did your investigation determine whether or not those photos were of Mr. Elmore's wife or someone else? They were of someone else. The photos are here as part of the file. Ooh. These appear to be vagina pictures uh, very close up <laughs> of what I th think are two different vaginas. <laughs> they, they look completely different. Yeah. Um, Dang. Yeah. And you found these in Mr. Elmore's phone? Yes. Woo. That's a lot. That's a lot. Mr. <laughs> Elmore, is this a co-worker? No, Your Honor. Well, who, who, is... who are the two different? Because they ain't the same. <laughs> did, did these come from the same phone? They came from the same phone, and we were able to determine uh, through analysis of the pictures that uh, one of the photos came from his wife's phone. But what the other one did not. That's correct. <laughs> I deny that. Ron, would you hunt these to Miss Pfizer and let her take a look and see if she can identify <laughs> her versus not her? Dang. Mm -mm -mm. One I recognize. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and one you don't. <laughs> Another one I don't. Um, at this point, I just, I just want the results. I just, I can't even, I can't even. To further investigate, this court ordered a polygraph examination of Mr. Elmore, and we have those results. At this time, the court will call licensed private investigator and polygraph examiner Kendall Show. Mom, please escort him. Kendall Show. You asked Mr. Elmore, since being married to Ms. Pfizer, have you had sexual intercourse with another woman? What was his response? He said no. What <clears throat> did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Ms. Pfizer, that's the first real smile I've seen. 
And that's a sigh. A sigh of Wait a minute, that was a deep sigh. <laughs> Tell me what you're thinking. Tell oh. him what you're thinking. Well, first things first, I just want to say I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank I'm you. Sorry. And I am more than relieved that I finally have the truth. And I just want to be able to start trusting you again. It been hard for me, too. Now, you know, now you know that I've been in the hospital because of my heart, because of this situation. It, it been hard for me, too, because I want you to be, be able to trust me once again, like you did once before. Give me reason, And, to. and, it, and it hurts me, you know? It, it's painful for you not to trust me. Just be honest with me. I, I have been honest with you, as you can see. You are clearly passionate about each other. This has been breaking your heart. This has been breaking your heart. Take that energy that you've been using on this stuff, on building each other up. Yes, and if you do that, y'all gonna be okay. Yes, Your Honor. You all have known each other for over 40 years. You've known each other since you were teenagers. Yes, You've been married eight years, but you, Mr. Fisher, believe that your bride is cheating. What is at stake if that is true? Well, Your Honor, I took care of this woman from head to toe. And if I find out today that this woman has cheated on me, after me being so good to her, if I find out today that she cheated on me, this marriage is over. You done. I'm done. Well, that's pretty clear, Mr. Cutler. He is it, it, done. I know. Ms. Fisher, you got a man who says he takes care of you. How do you respond to that? No, sir. This man is crazy. I've never <laughs> cheated on him. I've loved him since I was 15 years old. I'm very faithful, I'm very honest, and I'm submissive to this man. Oh. And have been. All right, now you all keep talking about all these years that you've known each other. Tell me, how did you all meet? Well, Your Honor, we met when um, we was kids. I used to live on the street where I grew up on. Uh-huh. And I used to be hanging out with my little partners on the street, and I'd be like, man, that's a bad little old baby right there, man. I gotta get that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, man, I, I just watched her for it, and then I went over to her one day when they was going to church, and I said, man, won't you go, to, won't you go out with me? She's like, man, I'm not going out with you unless you go to church. <laughs> So then? so then, one day I seen him going in the church, and I was dressed kind of nice that day. So I went up in the church, and um, <laughs> I said, "Well, she can see me," and she she seen me. Her eyes got kind of big, and she smiled. I said, "Yeah, I'm in now. I'm gonna get you." Today. <laughs> she went out with me, man. I was in love ever since, man. We was just inseparable, man. So, so Miss Fisher, well. Were you bluffing when you said that? Were you thinking no. there's no way in the world he's gonna show up in church? I knew he wasn't gonna come because he was a bad boy. And um, this man was my first. I lost my virginity to him. Oh, and, all right. Um, I fell in love with his intelligence. <laughs> all right, so we got this beautiful thing. You get him to go to church. You all have been together since then? Or what happened? No, actually, Your Honor, we had a 20-year um, breakup between them because when I was younger, she cheated on me. Oh. I, we had a baby, we was living life, we was living good. And this woman broke my heart, man, cheated on me, man. I could never forget when I left her. And your heart was tore up. Still tore up over. Tears come to your eyes. Yes, ma'am. That yes, the ma hurt and the and the wound was that deep. It's still there. You know, you talk about yep. time healing all wounds. This wound is still fresh. 20 years, you love somebody like you. I loved her, man. It's like cut your heart in half, man. You get somebody, you just think a queen, she was a a church girl and the nice, you know, I just was in love with her, man. When she cheated on me, man, it just tore me apart. So, Ms. Fisher, how does it make you feel to see that it still hurts him that you cheated on him in the past? It breaks my heart. I mean, it was a mistake that I made and I've been regretting it since from then <clears throat> until now. And I tried to ease that pain and I tried to ease his heart by letting him know that I love him and I will never cheat on him. Uh, it's been over 30-something years ago, and he still has that same pain. And I've been faithful. I've been loyal. So you He say. still don't believe me. So that's why we're here. All right, so you had this horrible breakup, it sounds like, for over 20 years. Yes, ma'am. How did you reconnect? I mean, because I'm thinking the way you welling up, you would be like, I don't ever want to see her again. So how did that, how did you get back together? Well, Your Honor, it was out the blue. She just called me one night, man. I was like, who is this? She say, Patricia. I say, what? And then my heart started beating. You know, because this is the girl that I was like, man. This is the one. Man, she called me and I was like, I got to have her back. 
Really? I got to. And, I, and, I, and we hooked back up. And, man, I married her like 30 days after we got back together. Wow. wow. <laughs> 30 days later, you all were married. Married. Whoa. So I always knew she was a girl for me, but I just believe she's doing the same thing she did to me when she was a kid. So, so Ms. Fisher, after 20 years, what made you decide to, to pick up the phone and, and start dialing, and how did that come about? Well, I got tired. I was in a lot of bad relationships, and I got to thinking. I said, my, my first love was always good to me. And I called him, and ever since then, we, we've been together. So you knew. It's like swans. You know, swans have one mate. That's yes, it. I don't care what... Even if the other swan dies, that swan will never get with another swan. Yes, ma'am. So he's your swan. He is my swan. He is my everything. He's, he's my protector. He's, he's everything to me. Everything should be happily ever after, <laughs> but it's not. Why? What happened? Well, Your Honor, as we, we... Our marriage carried on. I'm working hard, taking care of her. You know, I trusted her for a while. I mean, I guess I had a little trust for her. One night, we laying in the bed, because we sleep, you know, close cuddled up and everything. So one night, the phone call ring. I'm one who called in my house at 2 o'clock in the morning, my right. wife's phone. Right. Well, you know, I got my ear open. I hear his voice. I say, who is that on the phone? So when she described who's on the phone, it's the same ex on the phone that she cheated, with, cheated on me with when we was kids. He on a, but check this out, y'all. Now listen to this. It ain't just a phone number on the phone. The dude's name is in the phone, so you got to program that in your phone for him to talk to you. And she says she don't have no communication with her exes. Oh. What he did was he called in regards to a family member that had gotten into some trouble. And I explained that to my husband. I even put him on the phone with the man. And he still didn't believe me. Did you actually talk to the ex? Yeah, I told him don't call her phone no more. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, yeah. I understand that. <laughs> Look, I, it was easy enough for you and Mr. Fisher to rekindle. Yes. It would be equally easy enough for you and this ex to rekindle what you had. No, because me and me, and, what, what me and Mr. Fisher had were totally different. This guy was just one time, and that's it. Yeah. Where his insecurities are coming from is he cheated the whole marriage is what he's not telling you. That's where his insecurities are coming from. Before we start deflecting, I want to know, do you have any other concerns about this ex or any other ex? I got some more concerns, another, another reason why I think she's cheating. Okay, tell me about it. Can I go to the board and show you? Sure. Yes, sir. Step over, please. Go on over there. So I'm gonna lie on that. What we got? Go on. <laughs> okay, young. She's sitting on the side of the bed. Uh-huh putting on her high jeans or whatever. I look on her back, there's scratches on her back. How you get scratches on your back? It's like, I don't know. What, what scratches you talking about? So I take her to the mirror. I tell her to turn around and look in the mirror. She look in the mirror. Oh, them scratches probably got in there when I was in the shower or something. Watch this, Your Honor. The scratches is in this area, up and down. That's where your scratches should be. If you're scratching, scratching your... your own back. Right, okay. because you reach it back here doing this. Right. Watch this, Your Honor. The scratches that was on her back uh -huh. was going like this. Indicating oh. that I was in some passion and pulling when these scratches got up in my back. Oh. Oh, so they were horizontal like yes, somebody was reaching around her and... back like somebody had been, you know, embracing her. her. In. Yeah. Huh. Uh. When Mrs. Okay, Fisher you just asked, back. Thank, thank you, you. sir. Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Fisher? Yes, ma'am. When he asked you and suggested that this had happened, what was your response? I looked at him like he was crazy because See? I'm double jointed. So I, I, have a, I have a medical condition, so my skin is always itching. So I can reach my own back here, here. No, you don't here, scratch. Don't nobody here. scratch their back coming my across back, like this way up itches, in the middle. Come it on, you all the time. Now, Mrs. Fisher? Yes, ma'am. You said that you think that the reason he's throwing all these accusations, you deflected. And you said it's him. It's him. It's oh, been him. Tell me about that. Well, the first time I noticed that Mr. Fisher had been cheating on me is a young lady had came in my driveway honking her horn. Oh, she just kept honking like she was crazy. She just kept honk, 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 honk. At your home? Yes, yeah, so I'm in my driveway. So I'm looking out the window like, who is this? He's like, oh, I'll go out there and see who it is. I looked, they was gone. I looked okay. across the walkway. They was back in the, uh, on the side of the road. 
I guess he was arguing with her about coming to my house. I got an explanation for my cheating, though, Yarn. Huh? Okay. So it was I cheating. Ain't... Yeah, I have cheated. I cheated on her a bunch of times. But you cheated on her a bunch of times? Yes, sir. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are you telling me you have brought your wife here, mm -hmm. accusing her of cheating, mm -hmm. and this entire marriage you have been cheating? Look yes, at my look what she done to me, I Yarn. Did that. Is that a yes or a no? Yes, ma'am. You got some real gall coming up in my courtroom. <laughs> crying and everything. Uh, and, and accusing her. And you doing what you, you doing dirt on your own. Because she didn't did me like she didn't did me, y'all. So, I got to have somebody when if she if woo, we don't we don't end up. I making, gotta so, yeah, so, Mr. Fisher, is that the only oh, reason you got back with her so you could get back at her? Yes. Probably. It probably is, y'all. Really? You're right. Mm -hmm. It could be. Love but I love her, though. This. But if she but proved you... to me that she ain't cheating, she ain't hurt me like she hurt me when I was a kid, it's gonna be fixed. But right now, I have my insecurities got me doing what I do. So you, you don't love this wait, woman. Wait. You just assuming that if she passes the test, she's gonna have you after this. Yes, if I was her, I'd be like, deuces. Yana. Yeah, you, know, you don't understand, Yana. I got proof right here. Did you? Okay. Let me let me ask this. <laughs> Did you know about this beforehand? <laughs> well, after I got in his phone, I found those. Okay. So and this, that was last month. This is from his phone. It's a text message from another woman, and it reads, "I don't want to lose you, but always remember that I do love you." And this was last month. Yes, ma'am. And this is from some woman he's been seeing. Yes. Yes. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I've been cheating. How many different women? Uh, I can't count them. Can you give me a ballpark? About, about 10, 15. Oh, 10 or 15 I, women? I, yep, sir. I, I, and you don't feel any remorse about this? Not at all. I it's, mean, this is, this is... It sounds like the whole purpose for him getting back with her is so he could take the superior position and it's like, well, I took you back so I get to do what I want to do. I took you back, I provide for you so I can do whatever I want to do, but you can't do what you want to do. I That's gotta, what it sounds like. This is the pinnacle of petty. <laughs> I mean, I ain't never seen more petty than this. I mean, I'm a truthful man, y'all. Every person I ever cheated on her with, if she asked me, I done told the truth. I told her about it. I'm a good woman, though. I, I've, I've, I've never done nothing, anything, anything to you. I, I gotta ask Mr. Fisher, when was the last time you were with another woman sexually? Probably about two or three weeks ago. I had no idea. It's the same woman I told you that it's my side piece and she don't pass this test who so I'm gonna be with. I don't need you to tell me that you are just openly cheating because of something that happened 20 years ago. It's well over 20 years ago. Yeah. Darn. What is it? What hold, on, hold on, hold on. I just want to, you know, and Ms. Fisher, I'm not saying that two wrongs make a right. And so we're here today to find out if you have cheated. Yes, sir. That's what we're here for. That's what I want him to see. And look at the evidence that we have. Yes, sir. About whether you cheated or not. Exactly. We've got the fact that you cheated in the past, but right. you've admitted to. Right. We've got the 2 a.m. call from your ex, and we've got the scratches on your back. And for all of those reasons, Mr. Fisher believes you're cheating. No, sir. He'll see today. This court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, the court would like to call Tommy Platt, licensed polygraph examiner, to determine... Is she cheating? Rod <laughs> How are you, sir? Good, Your Honors. Could you share for the court record your credentials? Yes, ma'am. I have over 30 years' experience in the United States military and in law enforcement. I have been a licensed polygraph examiner for over 11 years and conducted nearly 3,000 exams. Not your first day. No, ma'am. You conducted a polygraph examination of Mrs. Fisher. Yes, ma'am. She was asked a series of questions. Yes, ma'am. You asked Ms. Fisher, since being married to your husband, have you had sexual intercourse with any other man? What was her response to that question? She stated no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that she was telling the truth.
Well, Ms. Fisher, you know, you, you describe yourself as a good woman, and, you know, I don't know if I agree with that. I am a I, good woman. I, I don't know if you're a good woman. You are an incredible woman if you Thank have you. stayed with him through all this. I've been through hell. Uh, you've been vindicated. Do you have anything that you want to say to Mr. Fisher? Yes, sir, I do. Oh, she got a statement. Can I, can I approach him? Yeah. Okay. These are for you. For all the cheating, all the hurt, all the lies that you've done to me, all the breakdown that you've done to me, I'm done. Yep. Yep. I'm good. That's for you. You are married, been together 14 years, you have a family, but cheating allegations have caused you, Ms. Donald, to seek information regarding a divorce from Mr. Starks. Yes, Your Honor. Tell me about why you've opened your case. Two years ago, uh, we got into an argument and he left that night. When he left, um, he was down the street with a friend and the next morning when he comes home and he's explaining what happened that night, he told me, when I talk to her, don't believe whatever she tells me. And since then, I've just... It's little things that make me feel like he's cheating with my friend. The situation she's talking about, I, um... I did leave. The, the young lady that she's pertaining to was down the hill. Her cousin gave me a ride to my mother's house. Mm -hmm. That's the only contact I've had with that woman in 14 years. But Before you knew you something was going to pop off. That's why you went back home and said, whatever you hear, don't no, believe it. Hold on, Your Honor. That's what she said. You, don't, you deny that I happened? I do not recollect saying anything like that. So what are you here to prove today? I'm here to prove that I love my wife, mm -hmm. I'm here for her, and that I'm not a cheater. Okay. I believe in Jesus Christ. I got married one time. And I'm not a cheater. Okay. And I'm standing on that. Bottom line. Ain't no more lines. Oh. All right. <laughs> but it's my understanding, Ms. Donald, that you have gone to see a divorce attorney. Yes, ma'am. I've seen lawyers. I've talked to everybody that I need to. If this doesn't work, if he's cheating on me, then I got my foot out the door. I'm ready to go. You're serious about this? Yes, I do love my husband. I really want our marriage to work. I got married one time. I don't want to get a divorce either, but I don't want him to be cheating on me as well. So, why do you believe he's cheating right now? Well, we've had incidents. Uh, I do have evidence, if I could give it to you. All right. Uh, Ron, would you yes, take sure. that from Ms. Donald? Thank you, ma'am. All right. So, tell us what we're looking at. Um, well, one day he told me that he was going to work and um, later on that day, I was looking at our GPS. It's kind of together on the phone. And it showed that he was at a hotel from 8 to 11.47. And he tells me that he was just driving through the parking lot, but I don't know no parking lots three hours big. Uh, okay, so at 8.07, he tells you he's going to work. Yeah, he's supposed to be at work. And you find on the GPS that it's at a hotel. Yes, ma'am. And he's at the hotel from 8.07 to 11.46. Yes, ma'am. And it's your understanding that he was supposed to be at work. Yes. Okay, were you at work or yes, were you at the hotel? Ma'am, I work in the moving industry. So, I, I, I usually meet my boss wherever close to where we're gonna go because he drives me, I have no license. Okay. So, the job we did that day was at uh, a place adjacent to a hotel. Yes, sir. So, if I'm in the same parking lot as the hotel, her GPS, I guess, picks up wherever I'm at. So, so I'm saying I ain't never been nowhere with no woman in a hotel outside of a hotel in a back car seat since I've been with my wife. I ain't been nowhere with no woman but, in the hotels. But if you were at... If you were meeting your boss to go to work, why does it have you there just for three hours? No, I'm, uh, I was at work all day. I don't understand. What we need to do is probably call the GPS company and figure <laughs> that out. So you're saying your job, your moving that job that day was adjacent to the hotel... Just like and that. And that's why I was paying it. The only reason. And, Ms. Ms. Donald, you don't believe that. No, sir. Also, that same day, um, he called co co-workers that he was supposed to be with. If you at work with the co-workers, what do you need to call them for? It would be like me calling Mr. Cutler. We sitting here on the bench together. No. Yes. All right. Your and all of this has led you to believe, okay, he was meeting somebody at that hotel. Yes, sir. Okay. And he was having sex with that person. That's what I believe. Oh, my God. Well, here's, the, here's right. what I know. That, um, the reason I called my co-worker is because I'm moving. We have an elevator. If the elevator gets stuck, or if I'm in the elevator, who you gonna call? You got me? 
Mr. Starks, you got an answer for everything, it seems like. You got, you got it lined yeah, out. You got an answer for everything. <laughs> because I'm the one living this. I work every day. What is it like living like this? Terrible. It's stressful. In the last okay. maybe seven months, I've lost 15 pounds because of this. Because of a lie. Have you told her about the stress in this relationship? For 14 years. You've been living I've this I've been for being accused years. of cheating for, since 2000. But have you told her about I what the stress is doing? I talk to her every day. She should see it. That's my wife. Oh, I see it. But he don't see the stress that he causes our whole house. Um, he's just stuck on him. You know, he's not really open to other people's feelings, to how we feel about the situation. Mr. Starks, That's do you right. understand yes. that she's under stress? Yes. Has I, she I, talked I to you about that. that? I truly believe that. And That's how, why I'm here. what is your reaction to that? My reaction is I'm here. I've been the same person since I've met my wife. I've never... Well, there's been a, a situation in 2004 or five where I cheated on my wife. We were dating then. You were dating. We were then. dating then. We were three months, four months together. And he cheated on me for a year. This has been two years. This one is two years. And I just before we were married. About this one. But okay, so you have cheated in the past. You admitted it. You took him back. But you understand why her trust is broken. Yes. Once that trust is broken, and then you don't take affirmative steps to reestablish it. From then on, there's a cloud. You all have been living under a cloud but all this time. But he's saying he has taken the steps. He's yes, been why faithful. get married to someone that cheated on you if you don't believe in them? So, Ms. Donald, is there any particular person that you're concerned about that he's cheating with? With my neighbor. Oh. Um, she was a close friend. It's uh, just going really crazy, you know? He says, I, I want to believe that he's not cheating, but it's just the little things that happen like our GPS, it'll say that he's at my home and he's not at my home. So that's she's... saying that the GPS ain't working. If it's saying that I'm not at home, it could be, I could be right beside her and she tells me, uh, your GPS said you're down the street. And she's even told me that her GPS doesn't correctly work sometimes. All right, when you say the, she's GPS, the GPS is not, it says that he's home, but he's not home, where do you think he is? With my neighbor. I mean, how close is the neighbor to you? Are you, are you in the same building or right yes, next door? Yes, in the same so, building. So, it may show that he's home but because you're in the same building. Yes, ma'am. But it's not... He's not in your apartment. Yes, ma'am. You brought an exhibit to demonstrate what you're talking about. Yes, is that sir. right? Yes. Okay. Would you step to the monitor, please? Okay, we, we were into it that night, so he went to a friend's house... And I wanted to, you know, reconcile that night. I wanted him to come home. So I go out to his friend's house. At 1.45, I get there, and we sit for a minute. You know, I asked him if he wanted to come home. He said that he wanted to stay because he could get to his job better that way, although I could have drove him. So I leave, and I get home at 2.27. Mm -hmm. Later on that night, my phone pings from his phone on the GPS, and it says that he's at my house at 3.46. He was never at my house. Nowhere in my house was he to be found in my apartment. Your phone tells you that he gets home at 346. Yes. But he's not in your apartment. No, Your Honor. And so from that, from 346 to 719... At 719, that's when he leaves for work. At the same time he was leaving for work, the neighbor was leaving as well. So you believe that at 346 he was in the building? Yes. But he wasn't in your apartment? No, ma'am. He was at the neighbor's apartment. That's what I believe. And that's why it pinged that he was home. He was in the building, but he was with the neighbor. Yes. And you believe he was with the neighbor because he's it. cheating? Yeah, I believe so. And also at 719, I was still at home. All right. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Donald. If you come back to the podium, please. All right, Mr. Starks, are you cheating with this neighbor? All right, Mr. Starks, are you cheating with this neighbor? Never. Were you at her house? Never. You were not at her home? Never. Only time I've been at her home was when she first moved in. She drinks a little bit. I did a moving a job. A lot. <laughs> I did a moving job. They gave me liquor. I thought they were pretty cool. She's a drinker. I gave it to her. So, ever since I gave her, did a, a good deed or whatever, or whatever, trying to be a friend, like she said... Oh, he's been, been a friend a lot. Starks, why he, is... he, he, he gave her a lot of liquor. He's been a friend very often. He, he's not often? even a big drinker. Often? And he would go and buy liquor and... Oh, I'm gonna take one over here. Let me tell y'all often On her birthday... She got me so messed up. <laughs> I can't look out my own windows. 
If I look out my window and her car, her, her car pulls up, I'm cheating. Just for her pull up. But Mr. Stark, why is it that her GPS you shows that your phone was in your apartment building, but you weren't at home? Please explain it to me. You explain it to me. I can't. You, that's why you're not, here. I'm not being accused of cheating. You're the I one that's being that. accused of cheating. I, you explain to me I can answer, why... You explain to me why your phone shows up can't. as being in your apartment cannot. building, but you're not in your I apartment cannot explain for that. four hours. The only thing I can explain, Mr. Cutler and Mrs. Cutler, <laughs> is I've never cheated on my wife. That's the only thing I can explain. So you have no explanation why your phone <laughs> shows that you were in I your apartment no building but not at home. I cannot tell you how GPS works. And you deny that you were in your I neighbor's apartment during that I period. I ain't been in that lady's house. If I was in her house, she knew about it. I ain't never been in her house fornicating, cheating with no woman. Not just her neighbor, no woman. I haven't hugged, kissed, touched a woman since 2000 and. Five or six. All right, Miss Dollar, you have a witness. <laughs> Two thousand five or six. Yeah. In between yeah, five or six. Yeah. Miss Dollar, wonderful. you have a witness, sir. Would you please stand? A witness. Would you please you state your name for the court and your relationship to the parties? Uh, I'm Randy Donnell. This is my sister. All right, Mr. Dotto, can you tell us? Do you believe your brother-in-law is cheating, and if so, why? I have reason to believe he's cheating because uh, there's a lot of things that don't add up. And uh, I was present for most of them, so... Have you seen him with the woman in question? Definitely. <laughs> I go outside and, you know, they having a good conversation. I'm, I walk up and everything stops and, you know, they split ways. There's even been a time where he said, uh, hey, I can't even talk to my neighbor. And I, I felt like, well, if you was talking to her before I came, why not continue? What, what, what are y'all talking about that I can't be around? That's happened multiple times, you know? So you, because you've seen it more than once... It's so noticeable that they must be talking about something they, they're doing. Right. You know when people are talking, and it's like... When you... Yeah. And, you, and when you come into a room, then it just... Everybody stops talking. Changes. Yeah. Right. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Donnell. Right. Sit down. I think we've heard enough evidence. Ms. Donnell believes that her husband is cheating with the neighbor. Mm-hmm. She tracked him to a hotel where he stayed for three hours, four hours. Mm-hmm. Her brother believes that he is involved with the neighbor because he's seen how they interact with each other. And they go silent when somebody walks in. And they go silent. And his phone is in the apartment complex at 3 in the morning till 7, but he's not in the apartment. And she knows he's not there because she's tracked his phone. And all of this has led her to believe that he's cheating. And she's already said that if she finds out that he's cheating, she's done. She's gone. The marriage is over. And she's gone as far as to talk to some attorneys about a divorce. Yes. Well, because of this, this court has done a complete investigation of this matter. At this time, the court would like to call former military interrogator Lena Sisko to determine, is he cheating? Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Good day, Ms. Cisco. How are you? I am well, Your Honor. How are you? Doing good. It's good to see you. Thank you. It's good to see you as well. Would you state your credentials, please, for the court? Yes, Your Honor. I am a former Department of Defense certified military interrogator who oh. has interrogated members of Al-Qaeda and Taliban Hello. shortly after 9-11. And since that time, I have been training law enforcement personnel, military personnel in interrogation and interviewing techniques. Tell us what you did to investigate this case. I had the accused write a witness statement, and I analyzed that for any indicators of truthfulness and deception. I studied the case file, and I put together an interrogation plan, and then I interrogated Mr. Starks. So, you conducted a full interrogation? Correct, Your Honor. What were your initial findings? When I interrogate someone, I look for any indicators of truthfulness and deception verbally and non-verbally. Mr. Starks did give me some concerns in the beginning when I asked what I call my lie-exposing questions. All right. What did you learn in your investigation? As the interrogation went on, he also gave me a few more concerns because some of his answers were very common, deceptive responses. So, for example, when I asked him if he had sex with the neighbor, he gave me a definitive no. But he also did a slight head nod as to yes. 
And then he went on to claim that what he is accused of being at a hotel for four hours, he was actually waiting for a ride from his boss to go to a work site. And then he proceeded to take out his phone and show me text messages of how they coordinate pickups. So what did you conclude? So for someone who has conducted hundreds of interrogations and interviews since 2003 and has been catching liars since then, I do not believe that Mr. Starks is cheating on his wife, and I do believe he's being truthful. All right, Miss, Miss Donald, you have a smile on your face. What's going through your mind hearing the results? It made me feel a lot better, you know. Just... Al-Qaeda, baby, I'm just normal. She interrogates Al-Qaeda. <laughs> I still feel like it's a lot of things that we need to work on, you know. Um, I don't like having trust issues, you know. And hearing these facts, do you feel like I can get to that point where I can start to trust him again? Because she's saying he has been faithful to you. That's all I wanted. And that's all I want. I love I... my wife. I've always loved her. I, I love her until I die. <laughs> but I want Chris to be sick. <laughs> you know, and, I, and I'm not the easiest person to get along with. I am not. Just like she's gonna have to work on her building her trust up in you, you're gonna have to dial back some of that difficulty. Yes, ma'am. So that you all can move forward no happily and healthily. No problem. And it's gonna be on both of you. She's gotta let the past go, but you also have to let the past go. Yep. Are you ready to let the past go? Yes, Your Honor. I do. Are you ready to look forward to a happy future and all of this behind you? I definitely am. Then that is a wonderful first step. Yes. <laughs> 